Welcome to LabMist.com and our lab video series in Cisco ACS. You can find a complete list of ACS videos on our website by clicking on the link above and sign up for our newsletters to receive the latest video updates. By default, a Cisco ACS uses the self-signed certificate for secure web management and user authentication. Since the certificate is that self-signed, it is not trusted by the user. In this video, we will install a proper certificate on Cisco ACS server so it will be trusted by clients during authentication and avoid certificate warning. Here's our lab setup. We have a Cisco ACS 5.4, the IP of 32.100, and the same VLAN, we also have domain controller as well as a Windows 2008 certificate authority server at the IP of .40. So the first thing we're going to do is to download a CA root certificate from our certificate server, and here we are on the certificate server slash domain controller itself. So all we need to do is go into HTTP localhost CRTSRV, since we will be using this 2008 Microsoft Certificate Authority server. And here under the option of download a CS certificate, you click on that. And it gives you the option to download whether it's DER or Base64 certificate. So we click download CA certificate. Then we just go save, then open folder. See right here when you click on it, you will see this is a root CA self signed certificate, and the name is LM root CA for us. Next, we're going to install this self signed root certificate on the ACS server. So, here we're going to go ahead and log into our ACS server with the ACS admin account and then log in. And if you go under the user and identity stores, there's an option for certificate authority, and you click add, and then you choose your certificate file. I believe our one is called cert new CR. Click open. If you want to use this particular root CA certificate to verify the client certificate as part of the EPTLS authentication, we'll check the box right here. And then for the description, we can put something like LM root CA and then we'll submit. I'll do a quick check, the issue to and issue by, and make sure that it has the correct name. The next thing we're going to do is generate a certificate signing request for the for our ACS server and have that signed by our root CA. So if you go under the system administration and then local server certificate and the local certificate, you can see the default self-signed certificate that was installed during or from the installation. Now to create a CSR, we'll click add and then you click generate certificate signing request and we'll click next. Here you need to type in the certificate subject. So CN, which is a common name, we're going to call it LM-ACS-PRI, which is the name of our ACS server with the being a FQDN with the domain name labmins.com. And then you can type in other certificate attribute, attributes that you want to have inserted on your certificate. For example, OU, it's called equal IT. For O, which is an organization called Lab Minutes. S for us, just a state, it's California, and then country is US. For key length, you can choose all the way up to 4096. We're just going to stick with 1024 and with SHA 1. Make sure there's no typo here, and we'll click Finish. Okay, now the message is telling you that the CRSI has been generated, and you need to go under the Outstanding Signing Request to see the certificate itself or the CSR itself, which is right here. And then what we want to do is to export that. Then we'll save the file and we're just going to save it on the desktop with the default name. Close some of these windows down. And next we'll bring up Notepad. It's just going to drag that file over. Copy the whole content of the CSR. And then we're going to go back to our certificate server. And this time we're going to choose request a certificate with the advanced certificate request and submit a certificate request by using base64 encoded. And we're just going to paste the content of our CSR. And for the certificate template, let's choose a web server and then submit. And here, this is our signed certificate. We're going to choose base64 encoded. We're going to download the certificate. So, so click saved. And again, we can open folder. You can see this time we call shirt new one. Now that we have the properly signed certificate, we can go back to the ACS server. 
go back to local certificate, click add. This time we're going to bind CA sign certificate, click next. Then we're going to choose the certificate file and I believe it's called cert new one. Open. And now we need to specify how you want to utilize the certificate. If you want to use it as part of the EAP TLS authentication, you would check EAP. And if you want to use that for the management interface or the web interface here as well for HTTPS, we'll click that as well. And we'll click finish. And now the message is telling you that it's going to replace the management certificate. And in order to do that, it needs to restart the service. So click OK to continue. And now it's just going to have to wait for the service to be restarted. Now to check the status of the service, what we can do is to SSH to the ACS. So let me bring up PuTTY, log into the ACS, and then you can issue the command show application status ACS. You can see right here the process for management is changed, so we have to wait for that to turn to running. So now the process management has turned into running. That means if we go back to the web interface and refresh our page, you can see right here we again being prompted for a certificate warning. That means our certificate for the web has changed. Go ahead and add exception. You can also view certificate. You can see right here, here's the common name, lmacspri.labmins.com. That has been issued by lmbrutca. Okay, so we'll confirm. And then lock in DCS admin. And then we'll go back under the local server certificate and then local certificate. And you can see now that we see our new certificate install with the EAP and management interface protocol enabled. So that's pretty much verify our certificate install. Okay, so now that we have successfully installed a certificate on our ACS server, we can later on use that for user authentication, as well as adding secondary ACS server for distributed and deployment. Okay, so that wraps up our video on ACS 5.4 certificate install. You can visit our website to view an extensive list of our lab videos and sign up to get additional access to lab contents. Thank you for watching labmins.com. I will see you guys in the next video.